Hey crochet friends, it's me, Jonah, and this show and tell is extra special because it focuses on a super simple project that's great for crocheters who are looking for their first mitten project. It's the super easy crochet mittens that use Karen Colorama Halo Yarn, which gives this beautiful halo effect once you finish your crochet project. And I love the way that they do this color blocking effect where they reverse the way that the mittens are made. On this side, it's light, and then the thumb and the tip are dark. And on this hand, it's dark, and then the thumb and the tip are light. I like how they reverse it. But the yarn used to get that effect is called Karen Colorama Halo. And the colorways always have a cream, and then the accompanying color varies widely, which is really nice because it suits many different people's needs. This here has a wide ranging, many different types of browns, from all the way from a light brown to a deeper brown. But there's like different ranges of neutrals. There's a nice blue. There's the green that I have here. There's a nice bright pink. So many different colors to choose from. And the stitches in these mittens are very simple as well. There's some single crochet decrease or single crochet two together. There's straight single crochet in the round no back and forth there's uh let's see here there's half double crochet it's regular there's half double crochet front post half double crochet back post and then of course your basics when it comes to crochet like your chain your slip stitch and that's about it so if you know those this project will be a breeze for any of those beginner to easy level crocheters who are looking for their first mitten project. So without further ado, let's get started because I can't wait to show you the most important parts of making this mitten. And that'll include how to do this cuff because it's different from making a double crochet ribbing because it makes it tighter and it also it makes it nicer in my opinion and lends itself better to a mitten cuff ribbing. And then I'll also show you how to work in the round and keep track of your rows without a stitch marker. And then I'll also get you started on working the thumb gusset here. And then depending on where we are and how it looks, we might start on working up here and skipping our nine single crochets and then working up straight. But from that point on, you're just working single crochets more and just skipping in the rounds. And then just decreasing from the top. And then here it's just more single crochets, but just working them from the thumb hole. And that's what we're gonna do in today's show and tell. So let's begin. Okay, so the first step is to begin with doing this right ribbing right here. So to do that, you need to put that slip knot on the hook. So you put your hook in, wrap around, and pull through to make that knot. And you've made that slip knot right here. It's a little hard to see, but there's many different ways. You can also just make an X, put your hook through, pull back, and knot it. And now you have to chain 20 loosely. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19 
and then 20. And then we're not going to twist this chain. We're going to turn it into a circle like this and slip stitch to this first stitch, like so. Just coming right into this first stitch. And then chain up two and half double crochet under two loops. And then yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, half double crochet, pull up a loop, half double crochet. And I'm starting off a little bit faster here because this is just the basics. This is just chains, half double crochets, slip stitches. But I'm still going a little slower just in case you need to ref get a little refresher. But keep in mind, you can always slow down the video or change up the playback speed or do whatever you need. Or just do the good old fashioned rewind. I'll just zoomed in a little bit, give you a closer view. So I'm still going under two loops when I enter. So one, two, so I'll give you a better way of doing this. So don't try to go under two loops. Just don't go under the bottom one. Do it that way. See how these two are kind of already next to each other? Just don't go under the bottom one. And then slip stitch into this first half double crochet. Oh, I dropped my loop. So I'll flip my row back here right side out. And this is what my row looks like. That is my row currently of half double crochets, my first row. So now it's time to begin working our rib stitches. So I'm going to chain one plus another one for a chain two. And then in this first stitch, I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go around this post like this and come out to the front and then yarn over and complete a half double crochet as normal. And then I'm going to yarn over and go around the post, but come to the front and go out to the back. around to the front and out to the back. Just one step at a time. And then you need to continue doing that all the way around, just as you would for normal ribbing. Like I discussed, you were going to do in the intro of the video. So just front post, half double crochet into the next stitch, back post, 
I'm going to zoom in for the next couple. Around the post of the next stitch. And then let's say this right here, this is your last stitch right there. And now it's time to slip stitch. So that officially is my first row complete. You can already see the ribs for forming. So then I will take out a row of all of the rows done. And you're supposed to do this till it's two inches, so I'm going to measure and see how long it is. Let's see if I did it till it's two inches. Oh, okay. So I actually did not do it till it's two inches. I did mine till it was two inches. And yeah, two and three quarters inches taking off this last loop of the chain. If you just took that off, it would be two and three quarters inches. Uh, but that's, that's how I made it because I like my cuffs a little bit longer. So I added on a f like a few extra rows. But that's just fine. You can customize it however you'd like. But then of course you wanna make sure you make the other corresponding mitten cuff the same size because you don't want one mitten cuff very short and one very long but you also don't want your mitten cuff short and I think two inches is kind of a short mitten cuff I think this is a good size for this mitten cuff considering we're also going to add more length up here but anyway let's just say for the, this show and tell's sake that this was the length that I wanted it to be and we were going to go on to our first round I'm just going to put a single crochet right into this first stitch. And it's going to be weird because it's going to have this loop right here that's kind of strange because it's already going to have a loop around it, but just pull back through. I know it's going to look kind of strange. See in there? But just continue to the next stitch and place another single crochet. And you're going to want to make sure that you have 20 at the end of each of these rows. Whoops, I just accidentally placed a slip stitch. And with this yarn, you can't really rely on what you see. You're just going to rely on really how it feels. You'll be able to feel eventually. If you, you'll be able to feel like, oh, I accidentally just did a double crochet or I accidentally just slip stitched. And you'll be able to feel when you get to the end of the row. Like, I feel the row end is right here. Just because you can feel it's a little taller. So I know that the end of my row is right here. So, if I grab my needle to help show you. It's these two loops right here. Let me just pick up the other one. It's these two loops. And I currently am right here in this loop, but I need to get to this loop and I need to put my single crochet right in here, but I need to put my stitch marker through here. But I want to use a stitch marker of yarn, preferably. It doesn't matter. It just has to be a contrasting color and a color that's going to be contrasting for both, both of your color shades and it's going to be consistently contrasting, which Therefore means you cannot use cream. So if you're planning on using cream, I have, I have to say you cannot use cream unless, yeah, you can't really use cream 
unless you're planning on switching out your color markers when your color is going to get from light to dark, but that's really just going to end up being a pain later on. So wherever you find what your color is going to be, reach up, grab it. In this case, I'm going to use like a lavender color because you, you do want a color that's going to be very different from what you have because it's a stitch marker. So yes, it's going to be different. It's, and then just hold it in, in between from your next stitch, place it in there, and hold out a good portion to the back. It really doesn't matter, but of course, don't overdo it and be ridiculous. Just about a foot. A little excess is okay. And then single crochet into that first stitch of the next round. I'll zoom back out here. And then I'll speed up a little bit here so I can get around. Not too much though. I still want you to be able to see what I'm doing so you can follow along. Okay, I'm at the end of the row already. 20 stitches goes by pretty fast. But we want this stitch marker to be able to follow with us all the way up. So we're going to flip it back to the front, keeping it with us. We're going to ignore this first end right here. But we're just going to go to the next stitch now and keep going around. But see how this stitch marker came up with us? But yep, now we're going on to row number three. But now this makes it so easy to count our rows because we know where the row ends and where the row starts. So, so we know if we wanted to count, we would have to go along the marker by doing this. So we'd come to this first stitch and go like one, two, three. Because you would have to go up and down the marker like one, two, three. If the marker was right here, theoretically. Now the next row... We are going to begin the shape of the thumb gusset. So, now I want you to put your stitch marker back and then into this first stitch place two single crochets, okay? And then place one single crochet and each stitch around. In each of these stitches, just place one single crochet. And you have to do the same thing for socks and things of that nature when you have to do shaping for like the heel and the toes and things you have to shape like this. Oh, I'm at the end of the row, so I'm going to pull my stitch marker back. And then in this first stitch, I'm going to work two single crochets. But first, I'm going to lay it down flat. So you can like compare yours and see. But just keep in mind that, of course, this portion in, in here will be six rows. And this will be the actual length of your cuff. So it should be looking something more like this. 
with this running through here or here wherever your row will be starting from let me find it where would it be that's another good thing if you oh here it should be running right through here on this side So take a moment to compare if your mitten's looking sort of like this from this point on. Because from this point... You'd want to be working nine rows of this gusset shaping, where you work two single crochets into the first stitch, and then into the remaining stitches, you just put one single crochet. And at the end of it, you would have 29 single crochets, because you're going to work eight rows of that. Eight more rows after you work the first row, because you're going to go from 20 to 29. So you're going to work nine rows in total, and then you're going to skip nine stitches to go back to the same stitch count. So it's kind of like having the same width here, increasing up this way, because your hand gets wider here than it is down here, of course. And then decreasing here, just skipping a bunch of stitches to leave a hole here for your thumb. And then you'll work on it once later in a different color on the opposite end of your ogo to make it a contrasting color purposely designed of course and then we'll do the same thing at the top to make it match the thumb And just continue to do your gusset rows. After this next row, I'll show you how to do your skip nine. Though in reality, it's exactly what it sounds like. You'll so you now you'll still flip your your uh, stitch marker here. But now you'll skip 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and just single crochet into the next stitch, and can just continue crocheting, but keep your keep doing your stitch marker thing up and down, up and down. And then just make sure to keep following the pattern like I'll have, and you'll have your mitten. And also, make sure to let me know if doing these videos is helpful and if making them more in depth like I have been doing is helpful as well because I'm trying to do them more in depth and show more details and I'm just leave me some comments and give me some feedback on how I've been teaching everyone and also give me some more ideas on colors because I really like these and I think they're great for winter but I'm trying to think of some more fall colors, like, of course, the mustard and the burgundy, but I'm trying to think of some more abstract fall colors. So I'd love some, some, I'd love some suggestions from my crochet friends. Now that you've learned, or at least hopefully I've taught you well enough to the point where you're able to accomplish this half double crochet ribbing down here, this single crochet in the round portion without issue, and this thumb gusset, which sometimes can be the most difficult part on any given mitten, the thumb and at least skipping your ninth single crochet 
and then whipping through without issue this last portion of your mitten. I want you to tell me what changed from the first section or intro of this video uh, because when you work in the round on any given crochet project, a lot of cool things can happen. So let me know down in the comments what changed from the first section of this video. Crochet away, friends.